Thank you.
Good morning, everybody. This is Pastor Mark Hensley. I'm sitting here in front of this Christmas tree with Ashley Boyd. Hi. How you doing, Ashley? I'm doing great. How are you? Good. We're honored that you're watching today, wherever you're watching from. And I want you to know that it's been a crazy year. I don't have to tell you anything new, right? 2020 has been something else. But we, uh, we wanted so much to do this big Easter event we do every year. We did. COVID came in. We pivoted from that, though, and we did uh, sandwiches for the community. We did. And you know, over eight weeks, Ashley, the folks, these wonderful servants God had come to help make these sandwiches and people contributed to that. Over 2000 meals were served. Wow. Isn't that awesome? That is amazing. So that's a great way to pivot and to make uh, lemon aid out of lemons, right? Absolutely. And then we had, after that, we had backpacks. And how many backpacks did we do this year? Do you remember? I think we we're right at 150 Wonderful. for the community. We kept it a little bit tighter this year. So you folks make all that happen with your generosity. And we just want to commend you as we reflect on this past year. And now uh, you wanted to talk about some little orange round things. What were, we what were did. those? We gave pumpkins, pumpkins to the community, about 100 yeah. of them. And it was just another new event for us with all the COVID regulations. We're still trying to maneuver on how to help the community. Yeah. Um, but also we don't want to stop helping the community just because of COVID, right. um, which is our new angel tree we have right, right here. Um, this Sunday, you will have the opportunity to grab a little girl or a little, little boy, boy tag right. from this tree right here um, on the front. It says, please bring it back by December 11th. And on the back, it will tell you little stats about your little boy okay. or girl, things that they need um, and want. And if you are a virtual member, we want to make sure you guys feel amazingly included. And Absolutely. you can help too, either by giving donations or contacting me. And I will get you a little boy or girl from the tree and text or email it or however you would like so that we're all kind of coming together right. one last time for this year. Your generosity is so appreciated, folks. So yesterday, Ashley and I went across the street, talked to the management at the apartments. Then we walked, uh, drove down to the mobile home park, talked to the management there. And we are so well received because of the generosity of God's people and really meeting needs. Uh, they, are, they just welcome us with open arms. In fact, one of the managers, we won't tell him exactly who, because she's probably gonna watch, and that blessed us too. Yes. She watches Wednesday nights, she watches Sundays, but she gave a personal gift to the angel tree herself. She did. And that is just huge. We just want to commend you. These are difficult times. And remember the Lord Jesus promised, he said, in this world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. And we as believers in Christ are indwelt by the Holy Spirit of God. So wherever you go, wherever you are, remember you're making a difference. You are leaving a shadow at, that points to the Lord Jesus Christ. And we just wanted to thank you as we head for the end of the year, huh? We do. Great. Well, Pastor Mark Hensley with the one and only Ashley Boyd Yay. saying thank you so much for making this church move forward effectively under the Lordship of Christ with your generous hearts and your big gifts to the church and small gifts. Everything adds up to making such a difference. And their children in the shadow of this church who maybe won't meet you this side of heaven, who will have a good Christmas because you care. And we want to thank you for that. Bye. Good morning, everybody. This is Pastor Mark Hensley from the Pikes Peak Park Baptist Church here in Colorado Springs. Just want to welcome you today. I'm so grateful that you're watching. Wherever you're watching from, let us know. Do let us uh, know how we can pray for you. And then uh, share this at the end of the message. Uh, that's how you help partner with us in sharing the gospel. And I do want to thank you for your financial gifts. Strange times we're living in, but the church moves on with community outreach, other things we're doing. And so your generosity is deeply appreciated. Let's pray together. Lord, I thank you for those who are watching who are so generous to pray, and to believe you for something more, not only for their own lives, but the life of this church and then so many that help the church financially. And it's just uh, encouraging to know that we're not alone, that we are better together than we are by ourselves. I ask your blessings on this message and on everyone who's watching and on their families and pray your continued blessings for good health and an optimistic spirit uh, for each one watching and that you would continue to guide this nation into your desired future. We thank you for today and are grateful in Jesus' name, amen. You're looking at a picture of an actress who was born October 10th, 1900. 
She lived to March 17, 1993, and she was eventually uh, garnered the nickname the First Lady of American Theater. She was one of only 12 people at the time who had won an Emmy, <clears throat> a Grammy, an Oscar, and a Tony Award. They call that the EGOT, and few people are able to do that. She has received uh, in her lifetime the Presidential Medal of Freedom. That's America's highest civil honor from President Ronald Reagan back in 1986. <clears throat> Here's the trivia for you. Do you know who it is? The actress was the wonderful, legendary actress, Helen Hayes. Helen Hayes said her mother drew a distinction between achievement and success, and that distinction stayed with her her whole career. She said her mother advised her that achievement is the knowledge that you've studied, that you've prepared, and worked hard and done the best that you can. Success, she said, is being praised by others. And she said, that's nice, but not as important or as satisfying as achievement. She said, always aim for achievement and forget about success. Achievement, her mother taught her, is the knowledge that you've studied, that you've worked hard and done the best that is in you. You know, folks, too often we believe that a situation we're currently in will always be that way. So many times, even people of faith believe that this is the best I'm going to experience. There's no, nothing more for me. And we get into a mindset, sometimes a terrible thinking mindset, almost a, a, an intellectual rut. And someone said a rut's nothing more than a grave with the ends kicked out, where we just don't believe God for anything more. But if we're to achieve what God wants us to achieve, we have to believe him for much more than we're experiencing. What would happen in your own Christian life, in the life of this church, or perhaps the church that you're attending when you're able to get out of the house? What would happen? What might our Lord do with our lives when we really wanted to live a life that brings him honor, that brings him glory, and that every achievement is like a flower to put in a bouquet to present to him. What would happen if we achieved real success when it comes to being a follower of Christ? Well, I want to talk to you today about that in First Chronicles chapter 4, verses 9 through 10. I'm going to talk about the subject, true achievement. First Chronicles chapter 4, beginning at verse 9. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bore him in pain. Jabez called upon the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my border, that your hand might be with me, and that you would keep me from harm, so that it might not bring me pain. And God granted what he asked. Here is a man stepping off the pages of the Old Testament from the book of Chronicles, an ordinary man in many ways, but extraordinary, and the, the writer of Chronicles takes a pause to bring him to our attention today. You'll notice the true achievement is the result of honorable living. True achievement is the result of purposeful prayer. And true achievement is not just honorable living and purposeful prayer, but it is believing prayer. And you say, Pastor, who was this Jabez character? I, I've heard about him because a, a, a popular book over the last 10 years came, came out about praying the Jabez prayer. You find it interesting. The name Jabez means he causes pain. So we can assume that there was something about his birth, something about his uh, initial arrival to the planet that made his mother or father call him Jabez. A name in the Old Testament often defined a person's future, what they would become. So perhaps Jabez's mother was predicting her baby's future, a life of pain, a life of agony, a life of duress. However, listen, folks, and listen to me closely. You and I are not defined 
by our name or our background. God has a plan for every life, and he had a plan for Jabez because notice, first of all, Jabez was more honorable. He lived out his honorable convictions, and so should we. We should strive for honorable living. Jabez, the Bible says, was more honorable than his brothers, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bore him in pain. It's really interesting. The record of genealogy of Judah is interrupted in Chronicles to bring us the name Jabez. His relationship with God must have been so exceptional, so sincere, so dynamic, so real, that the writer of Chronicles just takes a, a, a break and begins to write about this man from antiquity, this man who steps out of history to challenge us to make the most of our days, our short sojourn across the planet. Remember, Jabez is a Hebrew translation, meaning he causes pain. It can mean he, can, he who causes anguish. Can you imagine? Not only did his mother call him pain, she named him pain. Have you ever wanted to change your kids' names to pain? <laughs> I remember when our boys were little, and they would get into some challenging things for, for their mother and I. And uh, I, I commend these young parents. You, I told a young lady recently, moms have to be young, boy, because you got to keep up with those kids. And kids can just, they have such unbounded energy. And we have uh, depleting energy. <laughs> but in time, they grow up, and they mature, and they, uh, they continue to bless our lives. I don't know why Jabez's mother anguished over his birth, it may have been the literal pains of childbirth. It could have been the pressure of another mouth to feed. The pain in the text is not defined. But it was important enough for God to write it into his word. And to me, it's a great reminder, listen to me, that he cares about our pain and our sorrow. Our King, our Lord Jesus Christ, is a man of sorrows and acquainted, the Bible says, with grief. He understands the pain you feel, physical pain, emotional pain, financial pain. You say, Pastor, how do you know that? Because he is about to bless a man whose very name meant pain. He's about to have his name and his life recorded in history so that you and I can look back and then look forward with hope because God understands our pain. The folks, none of us leave this life without scars. Pain is inevitable. A prayer to the God who is sovereign over all things is wise and prudent when we face pain or reversal of any kind. Live enough life and you will know that oftentimes pain is a direct, basically direct response to our choices. In fact, when you think of honorable here, it's an amazing statement if you hear, hear it in context. Jabez was more honorable than all of his brothers. Literally, in the King James, all of his brethren. Uh, God is surfacing the name of Jabez, the character of Jabez, as being sterling, outstanding. Why? I liked what one commentator said about it. He said Jabez was of the same stock and the same lineage. He had neither nobility at birth nor was distinguished by earthly titles. In all these respects, he was on a level with his fellow man. But God tells a different story here. He says he was more honorable than all of them. Why? Because he prayed. Because he served his maker. Because he lived to do good among others. Therefore, he received an honor from God. And after all, isn't that what we're all striving for, to have pleased God with our lives? Someone once said this once, my life is God's gift to me. What I do with my life is my gift to God. What are you doing about that part of you that will live forever? Have you yielded your talents and your aspirations and your abilities to God? Have you said, God... 
only one life will soon be passed and only what's done for Christ will last. And I want you to have the best of me and all of me until my last breath. I tell you, that will make such a difference in your own life. Two words that will change the trajectory of your own spiritual life are the two words, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'll serve you. Yes, Lord. Do you notice that Jabez not only lived honorably, but he chose to seek the Lord in purposeful prayer. Jabez called upon the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my border, and that your hand might be with me, that you would keep me from harm, so that it might not bring me pain. Such a selfless prayer in many ways. He is declaring to God, I want you to bless me. Enlarge my border. Give me more opportunities. Help me to be more on mission for you. And that your hand might be with me. When you know God is with you, you can face any obstacle. When you know that he is with you and guiding you and directing you, you can be confident even when things around you are chaotic. And he says that you would keep me from harm, physical harm, physical duress, physical hurt, so that it might not bring me pain. There's that word again. A man who is so acquainted with pain is praying for God to give him a relief from it. And folks, you and I can come and ask him the same thing, whatever your pain today is. Back in December of 2000, John Piper, who was pastoring the Bethlehem Baptist Church in Minnesota, Minneapolis, asked this to his congregation that Sunday morning, what thing do I want God to do so much that it is there in my prayers every day? And he said to them, I suppose for many of you, it would be that my prayers are that my children would be saved and walk in truth and that our marriages would be strong. But what is the bigger picture, he asked them so long ago. God is the God of the whole earth and all the nations and all of history and all of life and all of culture and all the universe from one end of the galaxies to the other. Each of us was created, he wrote and spoke to them, to have a significant place in that great scheme of existence. What it is, what should I be, what should I pray for, he said, what do you pray for day in and day out about how you fit into the great scheme of God's marching kingdom? He said, I think the prayer that I have prayed more than any other at that level is this. Father, cause your name to be hallowed in my life and through my life. Hallowed be thy name. Make my life a means of people coming to reverence your name, to love your name, to praise and honor you and cherish and treasure and glorify you and your name. He said, I can recall back in my seminary days, ending a morning jog in Pasadena, California by sprinting east on Orange Grove Boulevard. He said, as the sun was coming up, and praying with my arms in the air and my heart pounding. This was his young seminarian prayer before God even placed him in a church to teach and preach. God, only give me life. Only keep my heart beating if it will cause people to hallow your name. Let your name be hallowed in my life. I love that about John Piper. And God has used him around the world. He said, I want you, God to stir you, your life into my life, to pray that my life and the family that you've given me and the church that I serve would count as something great for Christ's kingdom. That's what he wanted. That's a believing prayer. Here's Jabez 3,000 years ago saying, God, I want you to lead my life. I want you to expand my opportunities. I want you to give me additional scope of influence and protect me. I want your hand on me, guiding me. I remember reading where Peter Marshall, the great Scottish preacher, left Coatbridge, Scotland in 1927. He was born in 1902, and he said, I stood on the back of the ship 
as my beloved Scotland disappeared into the fog and I turned and I faced my unknown future. And he wrote about it and he talked about digging ditches all across New Jersey and how he started teaching and, and uh, helping at a Presbyterian church and a men's class became so enamored with the young Scot that they paid his seminary education and he became with the opportunity to preach and to teach as a young man and God brought that to him. It's amazing. And he said, I think about that. And he said, even when I stepped on that ship, he said, I was under divine orders. And what he meant by that is God was guiding him. God was directing him. God was making a way for him. And he'll make a way for you. Jabez wanted his opportunities to expand. He wanted God's hand to rest upon him. He wanted to be protected from harm. And God is about to answer that prayer with a believing prayer. The question I'd ask you today is what are you asking God to do that only he can do? And if he does it, it will change the entire current experience of your life and the life of others. Notice it was only, not only a purposeful prayer, finally it was a believing prayer. Do you see it? And God granted what he asked. Now, let's just be honest. We long for more detail here, don't we? We wish for an investigative reporter to come back and give us the rest of the story. Jabez called upon the God of Israel, and God responded. What does it mean to have his border Enlarged? Did he feel the moment-by-moment -moment presence of God? What kind of pain did he avoid? We want to know the answers. And heaven will reveal the answers. But remember this, I reminded you two weeks ago, never make the blunder of trying to forecast the way God is going to answer your prayer. It is enough to know, isn't it? That purposeful, believing prayer is offered from an honorable heart who refuses to be defined by his name and background, reached the ear of God. I loved what Warren Wiersbe said about this. Listen to this commentary. Like a precious jewel resting among unremarkable rocks. The glimpse we get of Jabez is a footnote in history about the impact of the uncommon, common man. The fact that he turned to God and depended on God is the key that unlocked Jabez's life just as it unlocks every life. I'm so excited to be able to preach this text today and to tell you that the God who spoke into Jabez's life about a new beginning and a increased opportunities and his hand resting on his shoulder is the God who speaks to you today offering you the same guidance and direction and hope and purpose. And we need to find out, don't we? Just why we're here, why God placed us on this planet. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Some people sadly miss out on what God wants them to be and to achieve. Famous Irish playwright, George Bernard Shaw had really no faith to speak of. He had leanings towards communism. And sadly, that brilliant playwright was asked by a reporter this question. It was a what-if question. Mr. Shaw, if you could live your life over and, anybody, and be anybody you've ever known or any person from history, who would you be? George Bernard Shaw said, to be George Bernard Shaw that I could have been, but never was. Folks, we have so much time on this planet. If you will seek God with all your heart, he will open up opportunities and directives and guidance and provision that you can't even fathom. The question I would ask you this morning that the life of Jabez asks you this morning is this, what are you asking God for? Be specific, believe, and live a honorable life. And as you do, you will experience true achievement. I often tell 
congregations. If I had 1,000 lifetimes, I'd give every one of them to the Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes I look around at my life and where I'm at and the family he gave me, the wife he gave me, the three sons that we have. All of them love their parents. All of them are kind men. I look around at all the things that he's provided for me and I'm just grateful. At this time around Thanksgiving, how we need to clear off a spot and just say, I just want to thank you. I want to be like the blind man or the, the one leper who came back to say thank you. And Jesus said, well, weren't 10 of y'all healed? And only one came back. I want to be the one. Don't you be the one. I challenge you to be the one who says like Jabez of old, God, maybe I didn't have the greatest start. Maybe uh, my parents didn't give me all that they could have or I wanted. Uh, maybe I'm feeling lonely and disjointed today. But God, you're the God that gave a man whose very name meant pain, purpose. And I'm asking you to do the same. Would you please enlarge my territory? Would you put your wonderful hand on my shoulder? Would you guide me and protect me from harm? And let me bring you glory until my last moment here. That's the response of a grateful heart today with a message like this. Father, I thank you for those who are watching today. Sometimes we get weary of well-doing, but we know your word says we'll reap a harvest if we don't faint. Reinvigorate us, God. Restore to us the joy of our salvation and help us to live an honorable life. Help us to practice purposeful and believing prayer. And God, as you change our lives and our circumstances, help us to be two-legged testimonies of the power of Almighty God to shape a life, to fill a life, and to direct a life. And if there's someone watching that's not given their heart to Jesus Christ, help them to pray a prayer like this. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and rose from the dead. I believe you're the Son of God. And I believe you were tempted in all ways like we are yet without sin. And I believe three days after your death, you rose from the dead and you're coming again. And I just want you to include me in your forever family. Please forgive me of my sins. And like Jabez, I'm asking God to fill me with purpose, to guide me with his hand, to enlarge my territory, and to protect me from harm. But if harm comes, help me to not lose my testimony, but tell people about the one who comforts through the pain. Thank you for saving me. I give you my life. In Jesus' name, amen. It's been great to be with you. This morning, I hope that you've been encouraged today. Let us know where you're from. Share this with your friends and just realize how deeply honored I am to have had this time with you. Pastor Mark Hensley from the Pikes Peak Park Baptist Church in Colorado Springs, Colorado, saying have a great rest of your Sunday.